it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. While still standing, I just want us to honor Reverend Godwin Abba and his dear wife. Thank you. Truly appreciate you. And I also honor all of the servants of God in this place. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. I trust that within the time that we have, the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Can we pray in one minute, just asking the Lord to show us mercy tonight and to open our eyes that we may see. Please go ahead and pray. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. There are liftings in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Are you praying? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power to break every chain. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord for a visitation tonight. An encounter that will change your life. Shabrato Sata Shalakranda Sibati Shiata. Are you praying? Shebrende Gedebaha Shalabako Siata. Shabranda Dose Siata Hasata. Lord, let something happen in our lives that will change and shift us forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was very touched when I saw the theme of the conference. And I just wondered what would have gone into the heart of the servant of God and his dear wife. To have put such a conference. But then I discerned that truly this conference is a prophecy. That there are people who the Lord is trusting to lift. From certain dungeons into a level and a dimension where their lives will speak the praises of the kingdom hallelujah and i plead with you in the name of jesus that you be sensitive to these few minutes that we have together um, it takes a lot of discernment to receive at prophetic moments and there must be a requisite level of meekness you must open up your heart to discern what god is saying 
there shouldn't be assumptions at all these are spiritual realities hallelujah praise the name of the lord you're going to sit down but please help me with the sound while i stood here i began to see the wind just blow round this place and when i saw that wind the scripture that came to me was ezekiel 37 and he said prophesy to these books he said as i prophesied there was a sound there was a sound we'll sit down shortly for the word but i just want to honor that which the lord had opened my eyes to see i saw a wind blowing and i want to stretch my hands because i'm seeing the number nine pastor please is it all right the number nine this is what i see in the spirit and the power of god is coming upon those people it's a strange restoration please i want you to bring them out right now in the name of jesus i come with the rod of a higher priesthood i declare by the spirit you're being shifted to a new season in the spirit in the name of jesus please bring them out i speak by the message of the god of david that your life will never be the same i send this word as a prophetic instruction in the spirit in the name of jesus may that wind blow over the length and the breadth of this building and set you free in the name of jesus christ just a minute and we'll be seated let's just honor what the lord is doing please bring them out you will never never be the same i assure you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord is asking me to prophesy speed please whether you are an usher or not hold them because they will start running physically the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah right now i stretch my hands and i declare that grace that delay you call it a restoration i speak by the voice of prophecy in the name of him who died and rose again that you are shifted to a new dimension in the spirit a new dimension in the name of jesus you will never forget this conference for the rest of your life help this woman please bring them out but help this woman i stand in partnership with the grace upon this house and we declare by the spirit we open the prison doors and we declare by the voice of prophecy move forward make progress move forward advance by the spirit of grace you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change you will never be the same you've touched his grace never be the same You've touched his grace. Hallelujah. Listen. You see, when you come for conferences like this, like the man of God was sharing, it is important for you to understand that this is not just some religious activity conjured by men. This is an expression of a deep desire from your pastor and your father to see that truly, you step into superior dimensions in the spirit where your life becomes a testament of his speakings and i have only come tonight to lend my voice with your father and the grace upon this house to call the devil a liar even in this season and to decree and declare that truly the bible says there is hope for a tree in the name of jesus christ and because you are that tree that is planted in the house of god the bible declares that you must flourish in the courts of our god hallelujah for all those who have come out i stand in partnership with the grace in this house 
and in the name of Jesus that which needs to be corrected we correct now in the spirit that which needs to be taken out we take out now in the name of Jesus that which needs to be introduced we introduce now in the name of Jesus we decree and declare that the end comes to captivity and that the impartation you have received we grant it access to speak in your life here and now and let Jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you please be seated if you can thank you Jesus what are you turning to one open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you. none like you it's into the darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you this is our testimony tonight that our God is greater our God is stronger Lord you are higher than many God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Help us, Holy Spirit, and let Jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. The mystery of restoration. The mystery of restoration. Please just help those under the anointing. Just guide them so they don't injure themselves. And let's lend our attention even at this time. The Bible declares that the kingdom of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities scripture does not leave us in the dark as to the possibilities that can happen to a believer in christ every once and again the bible would take out time to remind the inhabitants on earth that the god that we serve is a mighty god and that he is mighty on the strength of his names which are representations of his ability and his character please follow closely according to scripture every time god revealed a dimension of himself that dimension was captured in a name and preserved for generations to come so that if at any point you forgot that attribute of god he would come through that name and remind you that this ability is also part of what makes me God are we together so scattered all through scripture are the names of God which are a representation of his ability which are representations of the limitless possibilities that are in this kingdom so the Bible does tell us that we are in a kingdom with limitless possibilities again one of the things that from scripture we learn that god hates is idolatry because it's an attempt to bring him side by side to gods that do not match his ability are we together every time people demonstrated idolatry in scripture they compelled the god of the heavens to react and he did it in a way and a manner that made all and sundry within that dispensation to return back to the honor of the god of heaven so the Bible is a compendium of God's manifesto. From Genesis through Revelations, we see the consistency of his love, his power, his majesty through dispensations. Whether it is the parting of the sea, 
whether it is in prophetic statements parables the workings of jesus when he came as god manifest in the flesh all this is to the end that the saints understand that the god that we serve is unlimited it's not just it's not just a religious understanding that he truly is limit unlimited are we together but then the bible also lets us know please look up that the work of the believer in christ the quality of the believer's work in this kingdom is not only dependent on the love of god but is dependent on our understanding the systemic character of the kingdom that god is a god of systems and that the quality of my life and your life will not necessarily be a reflection of his love for us are we together but our understanding of what moses would call the ways of god so the depth and the degree to which i comprehend the ways of god will culminate to the extent of my victory in this kingdom experientially now for many believers the challenge is that we have an awareness of the possibilities that are captured in scripture the average believer can tell you the possibilities that are in scripture the average believer even if he does not know he will not it when he hears it the challenge most times is understanding the dynamics that cause the word to become flesh the bible says and the word became flesh and then it dwelt among us and then we beheld we couldn't behold what was locked up in the realm of the spirit it had to gain entrance into our realm so for as long as our profession of the faith remains just as a verbal communication or a wish locked up in the realm of the spirit frustration will be imminent we must sustain the spiritual technology to translate realities that have been captured as written in scripture to make it become our experience here and now hallelujah so the bible shows us through stories through prophecies through illustrations that for instance favor is a possibility with the saints in this kingdom are we together if you are not in this kingdom you cannot understand these workings because they are called mysteries a mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people like the military have their lingua franca if you're a military person they can speak it's a hidden code of operation you have to be trained to understand what they are saying so in the kingdom we have a system of operation built by god's own intelligence that if the saints access that body of truth the bible calls it marvelous light we are not just a chosen generation and a royal priesthood just because we happen to be at a time in history alone but that god has granted us access to a hidden body of truth that the bible calls marvelous light and it is on the strength of that light that our lives show in experience that we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and indeed a peculiar people are we still together so scattered through scripture we see that favor is a reality we saw it in the life of the nation of israel scattered through scripture we see that speed is a possibility scattered through scripture we see that restoration is a possibility scattered through scripture we see that all these dimensions are there so that listen the bible says the things that are written aforetime it says that they are for our learning that means those those historic materials should mentor us into an understanding they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope hope that makes not ashamed that if he did it before then he's able to do it again and one of those mysteries that represents a system of advantage as i call them you see everybody's life is ordinary and the same except for the leverage that the systems of advantage provide for you so we all have common destinies but we begin to rewrite our destinies as we access the systems of advantage we introduce these dimensions of kingdom reality to our lives and our lives begin to change so it is possible to find two people born of the same woman under the same condition sociologically speaking and territorially speaking so you would think that their destinies would look like 
the same one you know would, would, would be the same but one of them would access these systems of advantage and begin to change things in their lives when they looked at jesus because of his association with nazareth even nathaniel spoke and said can anything good it was not nathaniel's fault jesus never said you are lying that is the pattern except that the son of the living god already had this to change it everything is true until your life changes it it is true that delay is there it is true that failure is there it is true that spirits associated with territory can manipulate disfavor upon people it remains true until you rise by light are we blessed and so we want to explore very briefly the mystery of restoration that among the mysteries the body of truth according to matthew 13 and verse 11 in one of his mentorship sessions jesus began to teach and while he was teaching in parables he was shrouding mysteries in those parables and then later on he would explain to the disciples and he said it has been given unto you to know the word know there does not just mean an awareness it's the same word that is used as a man knowing his wife an encounter with proofs it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven these are the ordinances that cause the saints to command dominion on earth you may have heard me say it once and again that dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah the mystery of restoration are we still together joel chapter 2 and verse 25 we've learned from scripture and we've learned from the experience of living that it is possible to lose things sadly many people have lost loved ones sadly many people have lost money sadly many people have lost time so there are the bible lets us know that the concept of losses or losing is a concept that exists with men we can lose things but according to the, the the bible the greatest loss that can happen to a man is not the loss of things it is the loss of time and so when he begins to talk about restoration his emphasis is the years not the things i will restore the years because when you meet a dying man he will not ask you to make, transfer money into his account the greatest need of a dying man is more time isaiah 38 hezekiah did not require more money or an enlargement of his throne or rest round about hezekiah's request was god give me more time that means whatever steals your time is a true enemy if you lose money and gain it back you lose your reputation there are systems to build it back but when you lose time listen please it is because of these that the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise he says and not as unwise and what is the wisdom there master anything you know in scripture that will help you to redeem time he called it wisdom that means when i explore the mysteries of the kingdom it will give me an advantage over time are we together if you lose time there may not physically speaking be a way of gaining it back but we thank god because we serve a god who does not live in time we thank god because we serve a god who does not really even live in eternity because eternity is still a subject of time it's just time without end we serve a god who lives in a realm that the bible calls unapproachable light his realm is now no past no present no future now the concept of distance time does not is not a reality that exists in his realm it was a borrowed phenomenon to help men catch up with him that god does not live genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that means he was not in the heavens he was not in the earth you can't create what you are inside are we together now, 
please sit down pay attention so when we talk about the mystery of restoration we are trusting by the spirit of grace and wisdom to explore the systems of advantage listen it is on the strength of these mysteries that apostle paul will say for we know that all things all things do not just work just because we are christians there is a system of advantage we have that regardless that's why many times when you are complaining god really does not listen because in his realm it doesn't make any difference what you've lost or what you had it, it doesn't those realities are, are are vain it is within his power to reconstruct anything as though it never left so when you are saying god remember what i went through he says that, that is unnecessary there there are too many mysteries i can use to bring you back it's why it's painful to not trust god because it's an insult on his ability that even in heaven they are not done learning his ability in heaven without the constraint of the mortal nature with that heightened level of intelligence and through ages they have they have been students of god in heaven and yet they have not been able to comprehend so when the inhabitants on earth now begin to use the the temporary vacillations to insult the character of god is indicting on his nature when god says he is god it takes the spirit of god to help you understand the meaning of that statement now you be god almighty god listen to yourself you know be man stop let me explain that to you god is not a man he only became a man when you say god is a man that means he must submit to someone the person who created him must demand worship from him but he became a man meaning that it was an inconvenience he wore for as a representation of love not weakness you see that we are men we are not god we are men but he made us it's a translation so that our dominion this godlike dominion today is not absolute dominion is shared dominion dominion that can be withdrawn as proof that it did not originate from you. you 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 get what i'm trying to explain yes so when when we say god is not a man and then the bible says the man jesus is seated at the right hand of the father it's not a contradiction god is not a man but he became a man so that he will reveal the extent of the love of the father but i assure you god is not a man hallelujah praise the lord genesis chapter 40 help us holy spirit the things that are written aforetime the bible declares that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope genesis chapter 40 just a little background this is the story of joseph and his sojourn from his father's house to the place of destiny this is a classic on understanding the dynamics of destiny it is one of the classic expressions of how a man can transit himself from his father's house through the vicissitudes of life into a place of prophecy there is a spiritual road map through the life of joseph that if understood discerned and followed by any christian inevitably regardless of that which you face on the way you will emerge not only a champion but you will be a representation of the desire of god are we together yes this is very very powerful it's amazing pastor sir that when you begin your journey with god he never tells you what will happen on the way he will tell you that you will get to a land flowing with milk and honey so that you will set your gaze on that end but the dynamics of that journey is something that we must learn are we together please follow me genesis chapter 40 so um at this point a lot had happened to him his time in the house of potiphar and potiphar's wife who came around and said he raped her and cut the long story short he's in the prison now are we together and it came to pass 40 verse 1 after these things that the butler of the king of egypt and his baker had offended the lord of egypt 
verse 2 and pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers and he put them in word in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison hmm. the place where joseph was bound stop there please look up very interesting rendition that there are times there is a location in destiny please keep that scripture where both good and bad people meet there is a location in destiny that does not necessarily depend on the accuracy of your work or otherwise the bible says two people who had offended the king came into the prison and to their shock they found out that the innocent was also in the prison that the godly was also in the prison that there is a place where both men of character and lack of character can meet there is a place where men who are sincere and passionate and those who are lazy and unserious will meet this is a very strange mystery are we together now so the discourse starts in the prison why will a good man and an evil man still find themselves in the same position a man who feared God, who eschewed evil, who on account of his integrity, you would think that that man should just be defended and never even need to go through such a thing. Where is the scripture that says, I was young and now I am old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken? Please give us that scripture. This is a revelation that will help us by the spirit to mature and edit our interpretation and also discern how god answers prayers because when god speaks to you you must understand what he's saying for instance mary's trouble started the day he said you are highly favored that means everything that follows god's statement in his eyes is called favor from the day god tells a woman you are highly favored she gets into trouble her stomach is protruding there are rumors all around and they are saying mary i thought you were a virgin and she says i still am and says so how do you explain this which rabbi came around hey, no 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 it was a ghost i met an angel who told me a ghost from heaven will come and that what is in my womb is a holy child you know how stupid that sounds and yet in the mind of god he calls it favor so could it be that what you are going through now that the devil is making you feel that it is defeat in the eyes of prophecy because a day will come the reward will be for only the, the person who the person who has passed through what you have passed through and if you have not gone through that kind of thing you cannot qualify for it are we together there are times in life where they will invite you to come and preach not because you can preach but you are the only one who have gone through what you have gone through and you have earned the right god calls it Are we together that a day can come in your life look up please when the requirement will be the person who was never raised by a father never raised by a mother who among the people to be honored went through life on his own unassisted you will now find out that your 13 years of pain now puts you in a position of exclusivity there is a monetary value to pain there is a destiny value to pain you must learn to read the writings on the wall so you do not call what is profitable a disaster is god helping us so back to the scripture we're exploring the mysteries of restoration the discourse starts with the prison are we still together that an innocent young boy who served the lord sincerely and you know the beautiful thing about scripture is that it gives you an opportunity to see the story from god's standpoint and from the standpoint of man it would have been a disaster if we did not have the opportunity to know the truth of the story because it would then alter our interpretation about joseph so good people and evil people can find themselves in the prison so jesus can be on the cross and yet two criminals are by his left and right and all of them are hanging on a cross so if they say give me the list of all who are hanging on the cross you will call jesus too 
as one of those hanging on the cross and by the interpretation of men anybody who hangs on the cross is a sinner except that one is hanging on the cross not for the sin he committed for himself is a sacrifice for others this already should be a message to give us wisdom that when you see people go through things you cannot understand the secret is to pray for them and remain discerning because there are people carrying burdens they have no business carrying god part of the requirement of the grace they carry has compelled them to go through things that ordinarily they will never have gone through listen it's a mystery in the making of men is how compassion is built the ability to be touched with the feelings of inf of god's inf of of the infirmity of god's people do you know that if you are called into the healing ministry you will be surprised at the kind of training you will go through you will never be able to minister to people with a dimension of innocence there is a requisite level of association you must know what sickness does to people so that it will fuel compassion when you see someone on a wheelchair this is more more than your ego there is there is a memory bank in your history where you can draw power from it would have been unfair for god to say men did not love him without becoming a man even though he was god he needed to become a man subject himself through the limitations of men and jesus was surprised that when he became a man he cried he was surprised that when he became a are you getting blessed that when he became a man he was hungry and cursed a tree when he became a man he saw them insulting the house of god turning it into a place of merchandise he did not report them he flawed them now when he ascended to heaven as man he tells the father i was there i know what it means to come and preach on sunday when there is a plethora of betrayal waiting for me as a man of god I, I understand i know what it means to be praying for people and praying for people and maybe your own family may be going through the same challenge yet the burden of ministry demands that you remain true and consistent that you learn to look beyond yourself there is a time when both joseph and the wine presser can be in the prison so if they ask you as an onlooker to give a judgment about all those you find in prison you can use the attitude of sarcasm to say i saw joseph i saw the wine presser imagine joseph in prison saying lord is this how you honor those who bless you and yet heaven was saying do you not see that you are just two years plus left to sit upon a throne and legislate on behalf of his majesty the thing about lifting is that five minutes to your rising it will still look like you will never rise are we blessed wherever we stop tonight we'll pray but we, we, we are discussing something deep and serious hmm. that there are times where the opposite of success is failure but there are times where failure is part of success not the opposite of it there are times when god can pray some things out of your life but there are times he will give you the grace to pass through it it's a cup you must drink and a baptism you must be baptized by that is the qualification for intimacy can you drink of my cup the space to sit close to me is available but can you drink of my cup listen to me let me give you an advice respectfully speaking it is on account of this process of pain that he suffers no man to do them wrong the bible even says he rebukes king for their sake you see when you see a man of god stand what you see is the end product you do not see the journey that journey of pain builds an altar that is backed up by blood that even in the secret the jealousy of god is invested upon that altar believe me There are certain doors that you don't use a key you use blood to open them and there are men and women who have gone through this laborious the training of the great is a training that god has to hold your hand to go through some of you right now as i'm speaking to you you are seated you are in that season hmm. cry with honor do not be ashamed of your scar 
what looks like a symbol of shame today will become your badge of honor he said let no man trouble me i didn't jump classes in the spirit here are my scars that jesus showed his scars and the demons knew it paul showed his scars and the demons knew it and he said where is your own you don't just tell somebody be healed and he's healed no you don't just say the power of god is moving because you found it in scripture it's a joke there is a track record the price for life is death the weight of god is too heavy only dead men can carry him it's a realm in the spirit called galatians 2 20 where your ego dies many things happen in the prison are we together please listen to me this is both a prophetic teaching and a prophetic roadmap to show you where you are now there are times when you are in prison you will be amazed that you'll be praying over issues in your own life and you will not hear god but someone comes to sit down for counseling boom and the heaven is open and you are prophesying things and and the person leaves believing that your whole life is in order and when the person leaves you say god but who, what is this he's teaching you that silence is also a voice that when god is silent you must know what he's saying listen it is in the prison that he teaches you to discern anointings yes sir in the prison there is no ego in the prison there is no mic in the prison there is no apostle and prophet in the prison it purifies your hunger genesis 40. joseph pastor is in the prison he was there before them two offenders always come like they were at the cross and now they meet this guy please give us that scripture genesis chapter 40. <laughs> the place where joseph was bound the place where character was bound the place where a sincere heart was bound are we together then the bible says verse 4 and the captain of the guard charged joseph with them and he served them and they continued a season in the world leave that scripture there did you see that the difference between an attack of the enemy and a season you are passing through is that even in the pit there is still the signature of dominion and favor the bible says even though it was in the prison there was a token that god left that let this be a signature oh joseph that when darkness is all around you remember that this seed of dominion is still within you now for time's sake the bible tells us that joseph served them an offended man never did joseph give them the history of how he got there he was more passionate about serving them and lifting them and heaven was marking that examination joseph had every legitimate ground to say young man don't disturb me with your noise you offended the king it's a shame that you got to the throne and you are still back to the pit i'm an innocent man with prophecy upon my head i've worked with character and integrity and now i find myself here but joseph said forget about me my focus is to see that you are lifted so then death walks in us the bible says that life will walk in you that you are trusting god to pay your rent as a man of god started in ministry just when the money comes god says bring it to this ministry and sow it and you walk like someone who doesn't know what he's doing and while you are doing it an onlooker is saying this church thing is really making people mad and they do not know that there is a system of justice that is vetting the sincerity and the purity of your heart are we blessed mm. a prison is a place of confinement a prison is a place of delay a prison sometimes can be a place of slavery but i want to tell you prophetically a prison is a training ground 
is a place where God trains you. Are we blessed? The prison. Many of us are there now. Never trust people who do not have the history of a prison in their journey. Uh -uh. There is a requisite level of qualification that your passing through the prison adds to your spiritual credentials as you minister on behalf of His Majesty. I don't want to know your story. Tell me your pain. There are things I'm searching for. I don't trust your compassion until I see what you've gone through. If you have not been touched with the feelings of the infirmity, I don't believe you truly love people. There are things you go through that fuel genuine compassion. When someone comes to your office and says, Man of God, I'm not an irresponsible man. This finance thing is not just working. You don't laugh at him with sarcasm. You say, I've been there. I serve God with my heart. And suddenly the grace rises from that gate of compassion. There are many talkatives in the body of Christ without the history of the dealings of the Spirit. This is why compassion has not been able to come in the heart of many people. There are people who love God and train their children as best as they could. Raise them in the way of God. And those children just decided to go wayward. Be careful when you begin to conclude and, and, and analyze on those things. And say, no, no, if you train that child well, it may not always be so. Even Jesus had to struggle with Judas, who beheld the word every day for three and a half years. While the crusade was going, a negotiation to make money out of Jesus was going on. Is God speaking to us tonight? The prison. For the sake of time, let's discuss the subject of losses. We cannot understand restoration and we cannot understand coming back, bouncing back until we understand losses. To lose means to part ways with something, someone valuable or a time. To part way with time. To pathway with something to pathway with someone and I wrote down here very quickly we'll look at it five scriptural reasons why people lose anything at all five scriptural reasons now these reasons capture both the training of the believer and a caution to a careless one are we together number one the first reason according to scripture why people lose is lack of discernment please make sure you write it down hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 please help us media hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 the first reason why people lose in this kingdom is lack of discernment it says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep it was while men slept the bible says that the enemy came as a farmer too and planted something so it says awake thou that sleepest and christ shall give you light lack of discernment in genesis chapter 28 the story of jacob's encounter at laws that he would later call peniel it was the encounter where he saw a ladder ascending from the earth to the heaven. When you go to verse 16 of Genesis 28, the Bible says Jacob himself counseled himself and rebuked himself. He woke up from sleep. So the problem was sleep. He woke up from sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. There are many people who have lost seasons because they could not discern. There are many people who have lost relationships because they could not discern. There are many people who have missed an opportunity to receive territorial anointings because they could not discern. Discernment. Lack of discernment. Number two, for time's sake, we have to rush. The second reason why people lose in this kingdom and then in life and destiny is carelessness. The second biblical reason why people lose is carelessness. 
an attitude of non-challenge to life, non-challenge to destiny, non-challenge to walk. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, please. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape? That means bondage is imminent for anybody who lives a life of negligence. Are we together? Carelessness. Taking life for granted. Taking things for granted. Taking opportunities for granted. Oh, there's a free mentorship session with my pastor. But what is that about? I mean, I can always get it. Careless approach to life. One day I'll be anointed. I, I think there's, there's always time. All this fasting and prayer is, uh, is an interruption to my life. Carelessness. He says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. There is timing with destiny. Every time is not the right time. Every time is not convenient. He says, while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can walk again. Are we together? Yes. In athletics, in football, and most sports, they have an age range. No matter how passionate you are about it, once you pass that age range, sorry for you. Football, they have an age range. Tennis and all of these sports, they have an age range. Athletics. It is important for you to know that there is timing to destiny. So carelessness. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11. Revelation 3 and verse 11. Read with me, please, if you are a Christian and you can see it. One, to read. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast, that no man carelessness. Let it never be for you that let his bishopric, let another take. Carelessness. Number three, very quickly. Why do we lose in this kingdom? ignorance of the laws of life the laws of destiny laws of the kingdom ignorance of the laws of life the laws of destiny the laws of the kingdom psalm 82 and verse 5 that ignorance is a plague in this kingdom it says they know not neither will they understand that they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course lack of light verse 6 says i have said all of you are gods and you are children of the most high the tragedies in the next verse verse 7 he says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes ignorance ignorance is a terrible plague Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, it says. Not because you are tired of sitting there. For your light has come. Not because your light is around. It's always been around. But the day it comes to you. Ezekiel chapter 2. When you read from verse 1 and 2. He had an instruction. Rise up and he had no strength. He says, but the spirit entered into me, verse 2. And set me upon my feet. It takes light. It takes an understanding of the ways of God. Many people are ignorant of the ways of God. We just live our lives sociologically. Sadly, you hear this all around our society. Why sayings like one day go better? Why sayings like, um, I know one day, one day things will change. You see, all those kinds of thinkings will be to our own peril. Our lives must be in intentional the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully the quality of my life and your life is predicated on our depth of spiritual illumination our understanding the ways of god not just a religious study of scripture but study of scripture that reveal to us the keys of the kingdom are we blessed number four why do we lose in life and in this kingdom abuse and misuse the fourth reason why we lose 
abuse and misuse in matthew 25 the parable of the talents when you read from verse 14 down to 30 matthew 25 the bible talks about the parable of three men who were given talents one was given five the other two one the bible says the one with five went and traded it and returned back with a hundred percent the other one with two returned back with a hundred percent and the one who had one already he had an attitude of bitterness and jealousy and anger and he went and buried it you bury seeds not talents and when the master came he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow so i thought instead of wasting my time let me bury it here is your seed and god called him wicked and unprofitable that everything god gives you let me tell you something you see we talk a lot about transfer whether well transfer or it's not only unbelievers that good things leave believers who have who have a track record of abuse and misuse will also lose things because god is a god of of caution and he's a god of responsibility if you are hungry and he feeds you with five loaf and two fish and you now eat and you are full and carelessly waste the rest he will say go and gather the crumbs but tomorrow you can be sure you will not get that bread again god was so meticulous he showed us his sense of responsibility and caution when all those guys ate and they littered everywhere and left he said go and gather the crumbs and they gathered 12 baskets full abuse there are people who have abused power there are people who have abused and misused money there are people who have abused and misused the anointing abused and misused leadership africa as a continent is in a plague today sadly because of different levels of abuse and misuse of authority and power dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye